Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublet, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this special Friday edition of High Plains Today. My guest today, Kansas House of Representatives, District 125. He's right there, Shannon Francis. Good to see you today, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me, Chris. How are you today? Good. good. How's things in Topeka? Oh, they're great. You know, we're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're home on break. We've, uh, we're at turnaround right now. So uh, we all came home Wednesday. What happens at this time of the year is we have uh, a bill has to be out of its house of origin unless it's an exempt bill. Um, so we passed all the bills we're supposed to pass out of the House. Senate's passed all the bills they're supposed to pass out of the Senate. And now we'll spend the next month working on the Senate bills, and they'll spend the month working on our House bills um, so that we can move forward. Okay, so you're kind of on springish break, but heading back. Heading back. All Head right. back tomorrow. Okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, the first one, budget and the shortfall that we're facing this year. So the there is a, there now you yeah. guys have passed the budget. Yes. And it's out there and but there's still a shortfall that needs to be made up, correct? Well, we passed a uh a rescission uh allotment bill uh out of the house and I believe the Senate's passed it also. I'm not sure where the governor is on signing that, but basically we pretty much did what the governor's recommendations were on the rescission allotment bill. We made a few minor changes uh one of which would be to require uh, if the governor uses uh, the, the CAPERS payment to cover uh, any shortages we'll have throughout the rest of the, uh, this year, he's got to pay it back in the first quarter of uh, next year. So uh, long story short, um, about, I think it was October, we, we were made aware of the fact that we were $128 million short. Uh, right now, uh, with the passage of this bill, uh, we'll kind of squeak through the end of the year with six million dollar ending balance, and uh, that's where we're trying to get. Okay, so an ending balance come June thirty. Yep. Okay, going into July one with the new fiscal year. Now, is there a is there a limit or whatever you, you know? Is there so much we have to have in the bank on hand by law? By there's a statutory statutory requirement that we have. I believe a seven and a half percent ending balance, which is around. Uh, $480 million. Okay. Uh, we waived that. Um, you know, it's, it's really kind of a mess up there. You know, we continue to deal with the effects of the 2012 tax cuts where we've cut revenues, but we haven't cut spending um, enough to realize that. You know, some people say, well, you haven't cut spending at all. And, and one of the things I hate to remind people is we have cut spending, but it's in a way... A lot of us in western Kansas don't want to have it happen. Uh, we're transferring about $300 million a year from KDOT to the general fund that we weren't earlier. Uh, we've raised sales tax, uh, uh, 3500 I believe. We've done away with everybody's uh, deductions on their personal income tax, and we've, uh, except for, you still get half of your uh, deduction for uh, property tax, half for mortgage interest, and your charitable deductions. One of the things a lot of people in western Kansas, our seniors are going to struggle with, is we've done away with uh, your uh, deduction for health. Um, that affects a lot of our seniors and in, in, uh, senior citizens' living arrangements. Uh, that's a real problem. But, uh, but yeah. In, in, okay. But, Shannon, eventually the bank of KDOT is going to run dry. Yes. That <laughs> sales tax will expire, I believe, in 2020. You know, and... I think that's one of the things. If we can make it to 2020, they'll want to leave that tax in place and take it away from KDOT and move it to the general fund. That's what I would do if I was in but that you're, situation. You're possibly. one of you're one of how many? Hundred and well, and let me clarify. I'm not in favor of that because roads are very, very important to well, the yes. infrastructure of rural Kansas. So uh, we continue to uh, renege on the the promises we made when we pay, when we uh, passed the T Works bill. Is it now, is the T-Works bill doing okay? I mean, are, yeah. is everything going to get funded? And, and in southwest Kansas, you know, we're looking at, there's a lot of stuff that's supposed to happen on US-83 from Sublette all the way to Scott City. Uh, US-54 starting to go east out of Liberal towards Plains. I mean, are we still looking okay on that stuff? Or 
I know that bid letting is starting on the 54 project, but they let, is it come to is it going to come to fruition? Is it going to be is it going to be financed? They let the first phase of the uh, Highway 54 project. Uh, they let the uh, uh, first improvement uh, north of Sublette uh, for the overpass there. I think it's where uh, yeah, but 160 junction 160. there at that feed yard. Right. Yes, so that was the yeah. I, where we're really kind of dropping the ball at KDOT is uh, some of our uh, maintenance projects, our uh, 1R projects, which are major road renovations, and that's the thing that we're going to have to face down the road right now. I don't envy you. We've got a lot of problems, you know, I mean, but we do have to wake up to the fact that we probably have a revenue problem. We don't have a spending problem. Okay. We can say that we have a spending problem, but when you look at some <laughs> of the stuff across the board, you know, I, I believe we've got a 30% turnover in our corrections officers. Uh, we've got serious problems at our mental health uh, facilities. We're about 80 officers short in Kansas Highway Patrol. Uh, again, we're taking 200 million, at, or an extra almost 300 million a year from KDOT to make things work, so it's, it's difficult. I like your phrase, though. You just, they just keep kicking the can down the road, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, we continue to kick the can down the road. All right. And I didn't vote for the uh, allotment and rescission bill because I do think we need to address the underlying problems. I agree with you. Whatever they may be. All right. Stay right there. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk with Shannon some more. So stick around. We'll be right back. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. Welcome back. I'm joined by Shannon Francis. He is in the Kansas House of Representatives, District 125. We're talking about stuff that's going on in Topeka, which is kind of important. Okay, when we left, we were talking about the Bank of KDOT, the shortfalls, in the state budget, how we're going to make up for that. And the big thing is, it's going to lead us into capers because we're going to, you know, we, we had last year, you guys had had capers kind of on a, on a pretty steady glide path to get capers back funded where it needed to be. And now the governor's talking about, oh, wait, I need some of that money back. Right. Um, you know, one of the governor's uh, uh, prime objectives has been to restore the solvency of uh, KDOT. And one of the things that they look at is uh, how much of your expected need the uh, pension fund meets. Uh, before we passed the, uh, last year we borrowed a billion dollars to put into KDOT. Before that, we were at about 62% of uh, what our expected needs were. Uh, with the passage of the billion dollar bonding that we had last year, we're at about 67 or 68% of what our projected needs are. They say once you get to 80%, you're in really, really good shape. Um, unfortunately, one of the things that's in this budget, um, we've gave the ability to the government to make additional allotments uh, as needed if we fall below a projected ending balance of $100 million. Again, our current projected ending balance is currently about $6 million. Um, what we've said to the governor is one of the ways you can get through that uh, process is to not make our final payment of this fiscal year to KDOT, which is somewhere around $100 million. Um, you know, the House and the Senate both worked really, really hard to protect uh, the solvency of, K of uh, CAPERS. And so in the budget uh, that we passed, uh, we said that if you take $100 million from KDOT, you have to pay it back before October 1st, I believe, with 8% interest to uh, the CAPERS fund. You know, my concern is um, that, that sounds great, but let's, let's use an analogy of you making your house mortgage. Sure. We don't quite have enough money to make it through this month, uh, but we're going to make two payments next month. Okay. Um, so what you're doing is you're saying to the governor, okay, we'll let you do this, but you got to make two payments next time. That's right. And if we continue to have revenue shortfalls, where are we going to get the funds that we need to make that second payment? We'll make that second payment. I have no doubt in that. But I'm afraid that next uh, January, next February, we're going to have another $100 million that we have to come up 
with. Um, where most of the hundred, most of these shortages are coming up with are actually just uh, fee sweeps from different funds. You know, like we may have a, a, a fee fund for uh, the Kansas Bankers Association, where we actually collect fees from banks, and we use that to fund the regulatory operations of, of uh, those agencies. Uh, those are the kinds of things that we're sweeping to keep this thing alive, along with the KDOT deal. So, uh, so it's, like, it's like you guys in Topeka have... Uh, is, to put it in lamest term is, you, you know, when you go into the convenience store and there's a jar there with the money in it, yep. you guys are going out and picking up all the jars and taking all the cash yep. and the change. We're looking in the couch for change. <laughs> That's how we're kind of piecing it together. Um, so, but don't they have to fit? Now, how are we going to fix the revenues thing? I mean, has there been any movement or any talk or thought given on that at all? I mean, because we had, what, one month that we had... Plus, I think it was last November, we had revenues that were above what they projected, actually, or met the projections. Two of the last 14 months, I think, have exceeded yeah. projections from what I hear. Um, you know, you're starting to hear rumblings from different uh, representatives and senators that used to wanted to give this thing a little more time to work. Uh, I think they're starting to come to the realization that it's not going to work. Of course, the governor said repeatedly that he will veto any repeal of the... Uh, tax cut for uh, businesses. You know, currently we've got a system where C corporations pay taxes, S corporations, LLCs, uh, sole proprietors don't. So it does create some unfairness in the, in the system where if you are a C corporation, uh, you pay taxes. Uh, if you're an S corp, you don't. So you can be in the exact same industry. You can be competitors. One does, one, one doesn't. We restore the tax on the uh, businesses. It's about 200 million. Um, so that's part of the problem. Um, but well, a bigger part of the problem is our cut from 6.4 to where we are right now, 4.8 yeah. on the income tax. So what do, I mean, is there any way, I mean, if, if you do repeal it, is there any way? I, I'm sure there's probably not the votes to overturn a veto. No. No way? No way. <laughs> so we just have to keep kind of limping along until uh, uh, we either grow out of this thing, which we haven't done for the last three or four years. Or uh, we finally I can get see to that point. Into, well, I can see being into this thing for three or four years now that some of those guys in Topeka are going, this ain't working. We got to do something. There, there are more and more. One of the things that was really sad was somebody had a conversation about, let's restore the uh, tax on the uh, LLCs. That's kind of the way we say it. Um, but they mean all businesses. But let's go ahead and give a sales tax cut on groceries. You know, I, I do think it's a sad thing that, that we're one of the few states that taxes a full tax on, a, on groceries. It makes it very regressive. But the fact of the matter is, why do we want to raise taxes to cut another tax um, and not solve our underlying uh, revenue problem? Just keep kicking it down the road, like you say. Yeah, we keep to. Uh, right. But I do want to tell everybody at home, Capers is solvent. Nobody's going to lose their payments. You know, it's just, unfortunately, another way we're kicking it down the road. You know, hoping something good's going to happen. And, uh, right. you know, as everybody knows with our commodity prices, with oil and gas. Uh, it's been rough. Yeah, that's not helping the problem any at all. All right. Okay. But, yeah, capers, solve it. Don't worry about that. Okay. Stay right there. We're going to come back one more segment. We're going to talk about school finance because that's the other big elephant in the room that ties into all this. So stick around. Shannon and I will be right back after this. Welcome back. Shannon Francis. Kansas House of Representatives, District 125, talking about stuff that's going on in Topeka. All right, we've talked about the budget and the shortfall. We've talked about the other elephant in the room, the Capers and KDOT, the Bank of Capers, Bank of KDOT. Now, the other one that kind of ties into that in all this mess, school and finance. So one of the big things <laughs> that's happening in schools right now is uh, the Supreme Court issued a ruling uh, earlier this month. Uh, it was part of the Gannon decision, and they ruled on the equity portion of it. You know, a lot of us in the House, a lot of us in the Senate knew that there was a real problem uh, with the block grant that we passed. We knew that it didn't meet equity requirements by the court. Uh, there's a number of people in the House, a number of people in the Senate uh, that really don't care what the Supreme Court, uh, uh, how the Supreme Court interprets the Constitution, and it seemed like a good way to keep our spending low. Um, regardless, they, they ruled on that. And they said that if you don't restore the equity to the system, 
uh, we're going to shut the schools down June 30th. And by equity, what they're really trying to say is they want to make sure that the state spends approximately the same amount of money for a kid in Sublette that they do for a kid in Johnson County. Uh, or in Dodd City or Garden City. Or Everybody, liberal. Equity across the board. That's right. Because what happens under our system is while we send out the same amount of money for uh, every kid from the state, we all have different mill levy rates. So like a kid in uh, uh, Sublette, uh, the ability of that district to raise money may be much less for that child than it is in uh, Overland Park. So the court ruled on that. You know, there's somewhere around 50 to $60 million uh, that the uh, state needs to put into the system to restore that equity between districts. Uh, again, that's another place where that CAPERS payment, being able to kite that into the next year, uh, will allow, could possibly allow us to make that, uh, that requirement a little bit easier. Okay. Um, so, and actually, what, you know, I, I'm not sure it 100% will because I think that $50 million requirement will be due next year. Uh, but we'll find $50 million to make that work, I believe. Okay. But, yeah, but what it's going to do, it's going to even everybody out across the board. But it still doesn't take into account, you know, all the weighted waiting that goes into the old school formula for special ed, at risk, um, and those types of things, well, right? Well, and transportation. You know, if, if you're in, in Sublette, for instance... You know, you've got a, or Southwestern Heights, you've got a lot more busing that happens than, than a community like uh, uh, Johnson County. You know, they may, they may pick up 12 kids on a block, you know, and you may have to drive 12 miles to get one kid sure. in that part of the country. Yeah. So uh, that's what those waitings all were out there to help protect originally. And uh, another thing that, it, that the waitings are for is small class sizes. You know, in a lot of rural Kansas, we've got kids on the bus for an hour. Uh, and they're going to be in a class of nine when they get there. Um, you know, that doesn't happen in the major metropolitan areas. Well, rest. and then, okay, so let's fall back on and now, and I'm glad that this went away, was the consolidation bill that you guys were considering up there. I mean, talk about some transportation costs. Yeah. If you're going to start. Yeah. But I don't understand. I, I'm, I'm glad it went away because it just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Well, I think we have to understand in Topeka that, to be, Topeka doesn't always know best, but sometimes <laughs> the people in our communities that deal with these issues every day have a good grasp of what the problems are. You know, I think that's one of my biggest disappointments with Topeka is we don't spend enough time uh, trying to enable our local elected uh, board members to make good decisions. We spend a lot of time thinking we're smarter than they are and that we can tell them how to do it. But that being said, I think that's, that's the problem with consolidation is it doesn't need to be a top-down solution. What we need to do is think about what the uh, carrots are or how we can communicate best practices so that our communities can be, uh, be more efficient. And, but still, we aren't, you know, yes, the block grants will continue through this year. But next year, I mean, you guys have got to come up with some kind of a school formula. Before June 30th we are either going to have a constitutional crisis or we have to somehow address this equity. There are a number of people in the House and the Senate that are saying, bring it on, the courts won't really shut the schools down. And, and if they do, you know, that's what we want. Um, you know, there, there's really? just a lot of that. There's, there's, there's a lot of that? Okay. There's some of that that goes on. It's all talk. Nobody will say it in public. But uh, um, I, I think that's the big thing that's hard about it is uh, we're not all trying to... Uh, work together with our partners at local government to find the best solutions. Shannon, thanks for coming by today. Yep. You know you and I could spend an hour talking about this easy. Well, and that's the problem in Topeka. <laughs> There's a lot of talk, but we need some action. I appreciate you coming by yeah, today, though. Thanks. thanks. It's always good to talk to you. And join us next time right here on High Plains Today. Keep up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL-TV.